Welcome to Authorized Version Bible Thumper Ministries, dedicated to the gospel of Jesus Christ and preaching and teaching the word of God from the preserved and fallible King James Bible of 1611. The title of this study is Good Men. But before I start the, the mini-study here, I just want to do a quick update for the brethren out there. Um, this is uh, my first mini study on my land. Uh, we are official landowners and we're out here just exploring and all glory to the Lord doing a sermon, uh, just doing a quick little mini study here on the land. Just a quick sermon to um, exhort your brethren out there. And the title of this study is Good Men. Now go to Titus chapter 1 verses 7 through 9. Titus chapter 1, verses 7 through 9. For a bishop must be blameless, as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate, holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be, be that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayer, gainsayers. So you see right there that the Bible talks about good men. And what this is saying here is this is not saying that these people are righteous, that they are saved brethren or anything like that just because they do nice things. It's talking about good men as in good actions, as in genuinely nice-natured people. Now you can be nice and still be on your way to hell. You can still be good-natured you know, to, to the world and still be on your way to hell. And a lot of people say, well, well, wait wait a minute, wait a minute. Romans chapter 3, verses 10 to 12, that talks about uh, no, not one man is good. You know, not there is none righteous, no, not one, which we'll get to that here in just a second. And people out there, lost people, will probably say, well, isn't that a contradiction then? If no one's good, why is the Bible saying that good men are good now? Well, we'll go there. Romans 3, verses 10 to 12. You know, it's such a blessing being out on your own land that the Lord that the Lord blessed you with. The Lord has just been so abundantly good to us, and all praise and glory to Him for what we have now. I just I cannot thank the, the Lord enough. I cannot thank my Father in heaven, Jesus Christ, for what He's given me. But Romans chapter three, verses ten to twelve. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. So you see right there, righteous is much different from good. Those are two different statements. Where things are different, they are not the same. So good-natured people will help others. And there are people out there who are generally good-natured. You know, just, you know, if you're newly saved out there and you think the whole world, I mean, the whole world is against Jesus Christ. Let me make that clear. The whole world is against you if you are a truly saved, born-again Bible believer. However, they don't know that unless you plaster it all over yourself, right? They look at you as just somebody else. They get a weird feeling about you because the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, and you'll see that thing. People will be around you, and they'll literally tell you, I get a weird feeling from you. Or they'll, they'll act differently about you, around you, and they don't even know who you are. Why? Because you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, and that Spirit is there convicting the world, of, the world of sin. That Spirit is there, and they can feel it, whether they know it or not. But you see, there are good-natured people out there. There are what you would call good men out there. People that will basically help others. You know, they'll stop. Um, if they see you broken down in your car, they'll pull over and, you know, put, hook up some jumper cables to your car and give you a jump and help you get back on the road. You know, that's being, that's being good. You know, it's doing a good thing and everything like that. Or if you're broken down, your tire's out. They pull over and they help you change your tire. You know, maybe you're somebody who's new to it and you don't even know how to change a tire. You just bought your car and you're broken down and you're freaking out. Uh, how, you know, how can I do this? You know, I, I don't even know how to, how, to get, how to get my jack underneath the car or whatever the case is. How to get the bolts off, yada, yada. And then somebody pulls over and helps you do it. They guide you through it. That's someone being a genuine good person. Good as in good nature. 
Again, not righteous in the eyes of God, not righteous in going to heaven or something like that, you know? And when you encounter people that you witness to, they'll, you know, you simply ask them, well, do you believe you're a sinner? Well, no, I, I believe I'm a pretty good person. Well, we're all sinners. Well, when they're saying that they believe they're a good person, what they're really saying is they believe they're righteous, or they believe that they've done enough righteous things to qualify for, God, for, for the kingdom of the Lord, to qualify to go to heaven. It's not the case. There's only one way to qualify. And well, there's, there's, you have to qualify, you have to be a sinner, you have to admit that, and then you have to have the righteousness of Jesus Christ imputed to you through the death, brown resurrection. You believe on him, you confess him in prayer, you call upon the name of the Lord to be saved, and then he saves you. He looks at your heart, and if your heart is right, you are truly desperate, you are truly sorry, he will save you. 100%. That's the gospel. But, you see, they're not saved, but they're good-natured, and they're logical as well. You know, a lot of people out there, you'll encounter them all the time, especially, you know, what they call themselves conservative, the right-wingers, a lot of them. They're fairly uh, logical people. You know, they understand that gun rights are important. Uh, they understand that your rights as a human being, you know, in the United States, that God-given rights, the original rights from the original Constitution, they understand all those things, and they advocate for it. But are they saved? Absolutely not. Because they'll still let cuss words fly. They'll still do things that are d directly against the Lord. They'll still lie and things like that. But uh, for the most part, there's a lot of logic in them. They're very logical. You know, they understand important stuff. They understand that abortion's wrong, right? But they're, but they're still lost. That doesn't make them righteous at all. Whether, that, whether or not they believe it. But you see, you'll get that a lot. You'll see that with maybe co-workers or just local people that you live around, etc. You know, it's, it's the whole thing of, um, you know, when you go to work, uh, depending on what kind of work you do, maybe you have people there that are in charge to help you throughout the day. Maybe you have to work in, in um, uh, what's the word, uh, you have to work as a team, as a team member with your other team and work together and talk and plan things out and stuff like that. And you get along really well with them, let's say. You know, say that you're actually like, you can, t you're not, not, not like buddy, buddy friends, like you're hanging out with them or something, because that's the whole different thing. And, you know, a truly born again Christian, if you're hanging around lost people and stuff and they're doing a lot of wickedness, you're not going to last very long. You're going to uh, want to get away from that, obviously. But the point being is you make some jokes with them, clean jokes, not wicked stuff or anything like that, but you get along with them. You know, you consider them somewhat of a friend, but they're not somebody, you know, like a brother in Christ, for example, that you can actually fellowship with, if you understand what I'm saying here. So, where are they? They're genuinely nice people. And, you know, and you maybe local people that you've seen, they're nice and, and good natured, but they're still lost and on their way to hell. And you know it. You know, and that, that's a really sad thing, let me add. That's a really sad thing to see people that are completely, you know, they're logical, they are very, very nice and good natured, but yet they deny the Lord. But yet they cannot bring themselves to that point of repentance. They cannot look at themselves and say, hey, I'm a dirty, rotten, wretched sinner. I've sinned against, I've sinned before a holy, righteous, perfect God. They can't bring themselves to that point. And, you know, that's where logic ends. <laughs> that's where reason ends. That's where people become unreasonable. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I've done good things my whole life. I'm not a murderer. You're unreasonable. Uh, you have not done good things in your life. You know cussing is wrong in your heart. You know it. That's your, that's your conscience convicting you. You know that time that you stole bubble gum when you were younger, 13. Well, it was just bubble gum. You still stole, didn't you? I don't care what it was that you stole, you stole. You know it's wrong. Did you ever truly repent over that and you were sorry? Well, it was just bubble gum. That's the bad, that's the wrong attitude. That's unreasonable. You were unrighteous in doing that. You were wrong. Admit it. But that's the point. And you know, back in the 1800s, I mean, lots, there was lots of good people, you know? They, they didn't cuss or anything like that and stuff. A lot of people in the 1800s and everything were very, very good-natured people. They, they had a reverence for this book. They held this book in esteem. You know, they were honest with people. They did business the right way. They didn't cuss. And if somebody cussed, they looked at you like you were crazy. You know, they didn't, they didn't mess around on their wives. Everything, they lived morally, but they were not saved. A lot of these people, if you look at what they believed, their doctrines were so off in so many areas, they didn't even believe the right gospel. You can read about it. But they still had a nature against sin. They were still holding this book in esteem, you know? And that's the point, is that you could almost look at people like that from the 1800s and think, oh my gosh, everybody was saved. Not really. There's a lot of heretics out there. A lot of religious people. Religious people that come off as good, 
but they're still unrighteous before God. They have not truly received the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ. Therefore, they still went to hell, and they st they're still on their way to hell. Which brings me to my, fi my final point here, which would be Matthew 24, 12. Again, this wasn't a long study. Got a qu little bit more of exploring to do here in the, in the area and stuff, but just wanted to do a little mini-study for you, brethren. In uh, Matthew 24, verse 12. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. So you see, because iniquity abounds, the love of, money, of many is waxing cold. And that's the time that we are in. We are in a time where people do not have that same love that they had back in the 1800s. We are in a time, we are in a time where there are less good people than there were back in the 1800s. Why? Because we're nearing the end. We're getting closer and closer to the end. The end of all things in the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the catching up of the bride of Christ. So people are not as good as they used to be. And that's the sad part. You know, that le there's less people and they just stop helping others. I can't tell you how many times I've seen, you know, somebody broken down, everybody's passing by them and everything. You know, they're they're literally like they just broke down and stuff. And you'll still see people, people get out and help them, sure, but it's not happening, happening as much. You know, there um, there's this wicked thing I saw a while back. Uh, there was an old woman, she was getting off the bus, and um, I believe it was on the news. There was this old woman, she was getting off the bus, and there was some wicked person behind her, and for some reason, I don't remember exactly what happened, or I think it was an old man, it's been a while. It was an old man. But the idea being is he was getting off the bus, and he, must, he said something to the woman behind him, and the woman got so offended, she pushed the poor old man out of the bus onto the ground, and he died. He died. I believe they tracked her down. She's actually in jail. Good. Praise the Lord for that. That's wrong. That's wicked. The love of many is waxing cold. You don't do that to an elder, elderly person. I mean, elderly people can be just as wicked as young people. They're all the same. They're all unrighteous. But you don't, show, you don't do that, especially if you are a saved, born-again believer. You know, us especially. But again, that's the love of many waxing cold. People are so much more wicked now than they were in the 1800s because they don't have a reference for this book anymore they don't believe it anymore no 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 they have the ESV right the extremely stupid version they have the NLT new living uh, dead translation right they I mean it's it's just they they don't care about the true pure words of God anymore no they care about themselves you know they care about who can they get over this week who can they uh, hustle for some money real quick who can they uh, who can they steal a wife from you know and or a boyfriend from you know or a husband I'm sorry but the idea being is people are not as they were they're not as good as they used to be so and that's our cue that is our cue to shine brighter because as things get darker we as brethren as Christians shine brighter because we still do those good things Regardless of what the state of the world is, we'll still get out of our cars and help people if we if if we see the opportunity. We'll still do things that are good in the eyes of men. That's being of good report. So, and the big most important thing too is that when you are shining brighter, those of you who understand the importance of it in this t this day and age, don't be deceived by a con, which is the last part the last part of this uh, this study. Do not be deceived by people that wake you up at. Uh, 4 a.m. banging on your door begging to come in and stuff now it's good to be good-natured and you should check on them and everything but do not open your door to people like that it's a well-known thing out there that when people do that they're trying to do a home invasion and what a home invasion is is they have somebody act as a patsy they come and knock on your door act like there's some sort of issue to get you outside of the home to open your door and then somebody comes in with a gun and tries to take over your home and home invade that's what a home invasion is and the saddest part is, is us as Christians, we have this good nature where we want to help people of, in, in that situation. But yet now, because of the lo love of many waxing cold, we got to worry about if it's a con or not. You know, no, no more just being able to, to show your good nature and be of good report. No, 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 no. Now you have to make sure it's not a con. So to those of you brethren out there who may have seen things like that, always check through your keyhole or um, your, uh, the hole on your door. 
always keep your door closed at first and everything and really check things out before you let that person in your home and don't even let them in your home if they need to use like if they're saying they need to use the phone or something like that you call the police for them you know if they're asking for the police you call the police for them behind your door be careful be vigilant you have to be vigilant about that stuff because people do that now very very often and that's how wicked and satanic the world's getting but does that mean you need to be uh, you know, just a jerk to everybody and saying, well, I'm saved and the whole world's lost and I already know they're all going to do all this mean stuff and wicked stuff to me. No, you have to help them. You have to be a good report. And that's a part of it. But with that being said, that is the end of this uh, mini study here. And I just wanted to go over these scriptures and exhort you brethren out there to do good works and to do good in the sight of men and be of good report. And to just understand that when someone uses the word, he's a good man, that they're not entirely wrong, that people can be good-natured in what the Bible calls good men, but still be lost, essentially. You know, I've known a lot of good men in my life. You know, I've, I've seen a lot of good men that were completely lost, and they did go to hell. However, from an earthly standpoint, from an earthly sense, they were very nice, good-natured people. And it's a really sad thing to know that they went to hell. You know, I have a few family members that I know were very, very, very sweet people. They were very good-natured, but because... They did not listen or heed the gospel. They did not seek out God. They are now in hell burning. And it is a sad thing. But it's righteous. The Lord is righteous and we are not. You need to make sure that you have the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ. But with that being said, brethren, that is the end of this video. I pray that you all have a great day. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Thank you for watching Authorized Version Bible Thumper Ministries. James chapter 4 and verse 14. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. The gospel is this. Romans chapter 3 verses 10 to 12. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Friend, you are not a good person. Romans chapter 3, verses 19 to 23. Now we know what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Have you ever lied, cheated, fornicated, or even killed? James 2 verse 10 For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. You have sinned against a perfect, holy God. The punishment for sin is eternal hell. Matthew chapter 5, verses 29 to 30. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out, and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off, and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Hell. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 11. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Do you fear God? Are you sorry for your sins? Are you desperate for salvation? A new life? 2 Corinthians 7 10. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. The Good News, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Jesus died, was buried, and rose again the third day for your personal sins against God, so that you can be justified. 
Romans 3 verse 24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 10 verses 9 to 13, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Call on the Lord, ask for the free gift, and receive the new birth today. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new.